Hello, Bay Ridge. Welcome to another edition of After Hours. We obviously just finished celebrating Easter Sunday a couple of days ago, and I want to take a little bit of time for us to think about the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. The, these two aspects that really go together. When we consider what we talked about, how Jesus' resurrection uh, assures our own future resurrection, and it's the basis of our hope in the face of death. One of the things that we see in our culture right now is people, I think, are coming to a realization that we may not be able to keep our bodies living forever, but we're starting to hear things from people like Ray Kurzweil, who's an engineer at Google and done a lot of impressive uh, invention work throughout his life, but he and others are hoping that they can somehow download themselves digitally. You can even watch movies that have been kind of made about this idea that somehow we're going to live forever, but we're going to live forever in a digital state or somehow mentally. Down through history, people have talked about just living spiritually. But I want to be clear, that is not the Christian hope. The Christian hope is the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Now, why do I say that? There's at least uh, three key reasons that we believe in this. Number one, just because of creation. When we go back and we read in the creation account in early Genesis, we see that God made us body and soul. Human beings are both. There is a material part and an immaterial part. And to be human is to be comprised of a body and a soul. And therefore, since we consist of both, any idea that we would somehow live on just mentally or spiritually or digitally undermines what it actually means to be human, because to be human is to have this flesh and blood as well. Secondly, we can think of the incarnation of Jesus Christ. As we read through the scripture, and Jesus is the center of that scripture, his person and his work. He comes to redeem us, but notice that when he does this, he comes as a real human being. In the words of the Gospel of John, the Word became flesh. He lived among us, or he tabernacled among us. And John, in particular, in his writings, goes out of his way to say, look, Jesus was truly human. He was physical. We, we touched him. We felt him. We heard him. We, we knew who he was. My, my own hands touched Jesus. He is truly human. Early uh, heretical sects like the Gnostics and the, and the Docetists said, well, he appeared to be human, but the scriptures are replete with examples saying, no, he didn't appear to be human. He is truly human. And it's in his humanity that he has redeemed us as humans, and therefore we would believe in the resurrection of the body because that's essential to our humanity. Thirdly, there's the idea of the resurrection itself. Specifically, when we look at Jesus' resurrection, we see that Jesus was not raised just spiritually. He was raised physically. His body walked out of the tomb. If you read in the gospel accounts, uh, you see that Jesus goes out of his way. He asks to eat food. He tells them, reach out and touch me. Thomas, you can put your hand in where the, where the nails were. You can touch and see, I'm not a ghost. I am flesh and blood. I, I have flesh. I have bone. I am a real person. And the Gospels go out of their way to say this, that once Jesus was incarnated and took our flesh, he dwells in our flesh forever. In all of eternity, he is seated as the second Adam. And he's the pattern in everything for us, and that includes in our resurrection, because Jesus is raised bodily, we too will be raised bodily. Paul goes to great pains to speak of this in 1 Corinthians 15. And so this idea of the resurrection of the body is the consistent message of the early church. You can read in Acts 17 where Paul's speaking to the Greek philosophers there in Athens, and they're going along with him as he's proclaiming to them this unknown God until Paul speaks of the resurrection of the body. And that was foolishness to the Greeks. They didn't believe in that. They thought the whole purpose of life was getting out of the body. But Paul said, no, where we're going is that our body is going to be raised. It's going to be transformed and changed, but we're going to be in our body forever. And Paul would not sacrifice this to make it more palatable for these 
uh, Greek philosophers. You can also read, for example, in 1 Corinthians 15, which is the longest chapter in the New Testament specifically about the resurrection. And Paul is quite clear. The body that gets sown into the ground is the body that's going to be raised. There will be a bodily resurrection. And Paul says, if there is not, then we are without hope. We have lost the gospel. And then you can look at all the early creeds. When I use the phrase at the beginning of this, we believe in the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. That comes out of the Apostles' Creed. The Nicene Creed speaks of the resurrection and life in you know, another world, the eternal life. All of them speak not only of eternity, but they speak specifically of the resurrection of the body. In eternity, you and I are not going to be some sort of bodiless spirit floating around, nor will we be just a digital memory, uh, nor do we live on somehow mentally. We, who we are, our actual personality, which includes both our body and our soul, is going to be raised, is going to stand before God, and is going to live before God forever. As Job said, with my own eyes, I'm going to behold God. Friends, that is the hope to which we look forward. That is what can sustain us now in this present age. Because come what may, no matter how decrepit my body becomes, no matter what disease may strike it, no matter what may happen to it, even when it lies cold in the grave, it knows that there is hope because one day it will be raised. It will be reunited with our spirit and we will live forever to glorify and enjoy our God. I hope this is encouraging to you. I encourage you to pick up the phone again this week and call some folks. Let's stay connected as we're going through this time of social distancing so we can stay close to one another and look forward to the day when in the flesh we're going to come back together and see one another. I hope you have a great week and I look forward to seeing you later on this week. God bless.